The word on my heart tonight is freedom. Freedom. Somebody bring me my joy book again. I just want another one. I, don't want, I want to hold it in my hands. And I quickly uh, tell my story in that joy book. That joy book just came out on, uh, on uh, Chosen Books. It's like a 40, nearly 45 years of journey with Jesus. And I, I, uh, I got it through how I escaped. You know, I was, uh, like I say, I was a rebel in, in that communist Bulgaria, of course, when I say rebel, it wasn't outward, but inward, you know. And uh, because I was raised that Lenin, uh, Lenin is our daddy, and I did not like Lenin at all. But when I was about 12 or 13, I heard uh, uh, about another Lenin, John Lenin. I says, I like that Lenin. She loves you. Yeah, 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 Lenin. And that's a good Lenin. We, he could be our daddy. So me and three boys started the first rock band in Bulgaria. And thank you, Paul. And we weren't very good at all, but there was no way to prove it at the time because there was no another band to. So uh, eventually we got better and they put us on national television. Now, there's only one channel. So when we were on, there's nothing else. You couldn't surf us out. There's nothing. And so overnight, we were the number one band of Bulgaria. There's no number two. We, we dominate the charts. So this is how it happened. So became very, very quickly famous. A lot of young people gathered to our concerts. And, and young people standing, clapping. It's like a revolution to the commons. It, it, it's a dangerous thing. So they, they try to do rules like, no clapping during songs. Only at the end, a little bit. And of course, it didn't work. Uh, I've actually got arrested once for breaking the rule. I got excited, wanted to clap my hands, and anyways. So eventually they realized that they made a mistake, you know, because we're now another idol. They were idol, communist parties, and now we have another idol. So they shut us down publicly in front of all our fans. And it was embarrassing. I mean, for a teenager, imagine that. No more, no more rock and roll. Go home. You. No more. Bye. You know, so it was that. And I, it, it, that pushed me to uh, escape. I'm, I said, I want to be free. I want to be free. And so I'm telling you, it's, it's a dangerous thing to think about that in Bulgaria. Very dangerous. Because to be free, you, you either get arrested or if you try to run away, they, if they catch you, they'll, it's very, very bad. Okay. So... Somehow, me and the guitar player came up with a plan, and somehow it succeeded. We were smuggled by the Polish black market, and we escaped through Iron Curtain and went all the way, came to, to America. Wow. And, and uh, 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 we didn't even want to come to America because we were afraid of America, because the communists told us that America is the worst place in the world, the worst. You know, nothing but cowboys killing each other and... <laughs> And if they don't kill it, the mafia will kill it. So it's really, really bad. <laughs> so I'm thinking, in fact, I was in the army. Guys, I was in the army. I was a gunner in a, in a Russian tank. Every target that we practice, every target is American. I was trained to kill you. Aren't you glad I got saved? So I'm just throwing joy bombs and love bombs. No more. No more. <laughs> Ooh. Anyways. Uh, you know, so, so no country wanted to have us, and we, we had to get out of, uh, out of Vienna. We were in the Vienna in the in Richard camps. And, and finally somebody says, well, your only choice is America. And we go, oh, no. But there's no other place to go. So we go to the embassy of America, and we're very scared, very fearful. And, and the soldiers told us, what, what, what do you want? And he says, well, we want to go to America if we can. So how did you get here? So we told him we escaped. He says, quickly. So he brought us into the consulate. He says, tell the consulate how you escaped. We told a short journey. And he stood up, the, the American consulate stood up, opened his arms, and says, welcome to America, boys. We love you, kind. They risk your life. This is what America, this is the spirit of America. I'm cry I was crying, you know. And so that was my introduction to America. And what a beautiful country. I love everything. Uh, this country is so beautiful. And of course, we have problems, but you should see the problem that I come from. It's 
you can't, you can't compare. And the best thing about this country is we can change things we don't like. We actually can change it. We can decide we don't want this and we can change it. Come on, somebody. Wow. So, woo. So, anyways, I'm describing my journey, how I finally, uh, I was just as lost as, as it could be. But I went to Hollywood to pursue my career. And in Hollywood, in the streets, there were evangelists, right, Richie, evangelists preaching the gospel, boldly in your face. And, and they're going after me and says, Jesus loves you. He really does. He died for you. And I'm going, what are you on? Like, no, it's not a drug. It's Jesus. He loves you. He died for you. I'm going, whatever. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an atheist. I was basically raised by the comments. By the way, I have this whole audience here. Hi, guys. Love you, love you. Can you at least hear something? Because I don't know. I'm going out of this range here. Anyways, so they, uh, they had the word of knowledge. One of the things you want to have when you go on the streets, you have a word of knowledge, which is one of the gifts of the Spirit. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and these guys have both. And so the Lord spoke to him and says, don't waste your time. He ain't listening. He ain't getting nothing. He's, he's, brain, he's a brainwashing. You know? So like, feed him. Use food. No words, food, evangelism. They'll, they'll talk to him. And so they offer a meal. And it was very good, actually. I liked it. So they go, well, come on tomorrow again. We're going to have more food, more blessings. So I go, okay. So two months, they keep cooking this good food. Finally, I start feeling really guilty because I'm like eating their food and I don't believe a word they're saying. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, all right. I'm eating their food. And so after two months, I really said, that's it. I, I got to stop this. I, I got my little bag ready. I'm going back to Hollywood where I was headed. And just, I don't know, out of respect for all the cooking, I just give the, this thing to see you got one chance. So I step in the, in the way in the mountain area and I don't know what to say. And, and I, I feel stupid because, like, you, <laughs> how, what are you doing? You're talking to someone that doesn't exist, so stop it. Just, just go away. But I go, no, I got I to gotta say something. So I don't know what to say. And a thought came to say, in my mind, to say, God, do you exist? I go, that's a good way to prove he doesn't. Go ahead, say it, and get it over with. So I said, God, do you exist? As soon as I say exist, boom. Over me, Richie, like a, a, like a canopy or, or something like that, like a blanket. I'm going, what? It's like, what? You know, I'm sure I was using four-letter words. And I go, what is this? You know, da, da, da. Oh, my God, what is this? And the more it talked, the more thicker it got. It got closer to me. It got, and I'm going, what is this? And, and, and uh, I mean, even the acoustics of the place changed. It's like you went inside a, a tent of sorts. And I was like freaked out. And I'm going, is this God? Could this be God? And all of a sudden, the faith that there is a God went through me like lightnings. And I collapsed on the dirt from the overwhelming. You know, boom, no catcher, just boom, <laughs> fell. You know, and, and I started shaking. God, is this you? What is this? I want to know. I want to know. I want to know everything quick. I mean, I had an attitude. And I, and I just, you know, that's all I could say. And I was crying. And like, oh, so I'm going down to the guy's house. And they open the door. They go, ah, oh, come on in. <laughs> yes, finally this Bulgarian got it. I'm like, oh. you know, and now I didn't go to the kitchen. I stayed with them. They're worshiping. And I go, okay. <gasps> and, and they're worshiping. I saw, I didn't see the whole person, but I see the hands, you know, very special hands like this. About this much I could see someone like this, with very special hands. And I went into those hands, the hands of Jesus. Come on. Oh. And I'm still in his arms, his arms still wrapped around me. And he never lets go. And nothing can penetrate his love, his shield of love, his presence. Never leave. Never leave. Never forsake. Whoo, 
Come on, somebody, let's give Jesus praise. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Whoa. Guys, I, I, have, I have some, where is man? I, I had some notes. Paul, what's going on with the notes? I have an amazing, do you have all the notes? Guys, these are my notes, but they're notes. I, I, they're not nice and fine, but it's like the invisible, all these other, just I only see is the invisible and then the untouchable. Do I have them, the rest of them? Guys, I, I have preparation. I was really prepared, but we don't have them. Yeah, it must be in the back somewhere. I don't know where. Yeah, look for and find them with this game. This is one of my amazing leaders. She'll fix it. She'll, she'll get it. Paula Lutz. Okay, so, yeah, you can find them and just kind of help me get them. All right, I'll start with that. Start. I don't need notes, but it'd be nice to have them. Okay, so here goes. Uh, I'm praying, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing this vision for tonight. I'm seeing this vision. Of course, we're not just here, but we have many thousands of watching online, and I have some of my... Closer students, hi guys, love you. Wave if you hear me. Wave, wave. You hear me? Maybe not, they're not waving. Oops, I don't know what's going on, but anyways, just wave in the spirit. <laughs> wow, I wish we had the notes, but they're fun notes. You know, I got in a fun mode, although I'm really, really serious. Um, about this victory that God has planned for us. Huge victory, guys. This is a moment of victory. And I just want to equip you with a few imagery of, of, of what kind of an army you are. Um, and the Bible says, the Bible says um, in uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, says that, no child of God is a sinner. Hello. Right now you should be shouting me. That's me. No child. It's radical, isn't it? But this is 1 John 5, 18 in the uh, New English Bible. New English Bible. Okay? So not the old English, but the New English Bible. Okay? And uh, it, it is a shocking scripture, really. But that's not... The sinner is not the, the point that I'm going. I'm going for something else. But it's kind of unusual that that's what it says. Let's see the living Bible. No one who has become a part of God's family makes a practice of sinning. For, for, Christ, for, for Christ, God's son, holds him securely and the devil cannot get his hands on him. Come on. Now, yeah, that's a good one. Now, here's the N N New English Bible, NEB. It says, for we know that no child of God is a sinner. It is the Son of God who keeps him safe, and the evil one cannot touch. In other words, you could say it, at least in Bulgarian, I can say it the other way around. Christ is so protecting you that the, that the evil one can't touch you. Can't touch this. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> can't touch this. You're untouchable. I just want to give you good news. In Christ, you are part of the untouchable bride of Christ. Untouchable bride of Christ. Woo! Is this my notes? No. Okay, bring them, bring them. I have another intern. We have galore interns, and they're all great. This is Mike Zimmerman. Great words of knowledge. The guy is awesome. Thank you, thank you. I got it. All right. Okay, that's good. Now we, now we got the, the notes. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see what the notes say. By the way, we even had slides, but I'm not sure if we're that sophisticated so far. So, Okay. So, turn to 1 Peter 1.23. One uh, in King James, King James says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, 
by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. I'm kind of shaping your identity a little bit. Check it from the neck up. There it is, King James Version. Hey, we got high tech. Look at this. We, we are showing. So I'm, I'm trying to get you into a place where you, you understand what is available in Christ, what he made you to be. We, according to this scripture, what created you, the seed that created you made you incorruptible. In other words, no one can corrupt the born again spirit of the body of Christ. No one can corrupt it. For one, you can't touch it to corrupt it. Does it make sense? It, it makes sense in my Bulgarian language. I hope it makes sense in English. You're untouchable. That's why you're incorruptible. You are incorruptible. But even if somebody try to corrupt you, your spirit is untouchable. Now tell your brain to line up with who you are in the spirit. And I'm so happy to have Andrew because he's going to really lock this. Lock this in. How many love Andrew and you follow his, his... Okay, so so we got a cheering audience. All right. Woo! Ho! Okay, untouchable and corruptible. Like, listen to this. The same scripture, 1 Peter 1, 23, in the Philip's modern language. Philip's modern language, Philip was a... Was a, was a uh, Vicon in the Anglican church and uh, he just loved the word and he was trying to help his, uh, his parish understand the word so he's very good with in, in Greek and stuff so when the bombs of Hitler began to hit uh, London then the city was under the I mean destruction right it was like so they were all hiding and the church is shaking boom, boom, and God speaks to Mr. Phillips and Bishop or Vickers Phillips says, listen, don't get distracted with these bombs. Hitler's going to be gone. Now I want you to start translating the New Testament. During the bombs of Hitler, he started. And listen to how he translates this particular verse. It says this, for you are the sons of God now, the live and permanent, oh, there we go, the live and permanent Word of the living God has given you his own indestructible heredity. Brothers and sisters, this is the truth about your spirit. The truth about who you are. The born again new creation you are. You are indestructible. Let me say it again for this side here. You are indestructible. Your spirit is indestructible. No one can destroy, no one can touch even, more or less corrupt you because you are uncorruptible, untouchable, indestructible. Can I say it on this side here? Anybody believe me here? You're indestructible, your spirit, your, in, your heredity, your heredity is indestructible. Heredity is something more inward, kind of like DNA, inheritance outward. Heredity is something inward. Your DNA, the new DNA that you have from God, the seed of God, the spiritual DNA is indestructible. I just want to erase the fear factor from you. I want to wipe it out tonight. I want you to be so bold. I want you to become... Just totally comfortable with the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego type of anointing where we are not bowing to the darkness. We're not bowing to the lies. You cannot destroy us. We're indestructible. Oh, Jesus. Okay, four things that are crazy good. Now, we're going into, well, one more uh, idea from this scripture says, for through the living and eternal word of God, you've been born again as the children of a parent who is immortal. That makes you immortal. 
Come on. I see the mind is tick, 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 the brain surgeon. I, I smell, I smell burnt wires. This because some of these circuits are really going, what, 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 what? Yes, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true. This is where we're stepping into. We're stepping into the best time of our life, the best time of the body of Christ, corporately. We're talking of hundreds of thousands of Shadrachs and Meshachs and Abednego are being raised by God right now. Hundreds of thousands. Millions virtually. Millions virtually. Join in. Join in this indestructible army, an incorruptible army. Join in step by faith, by childlike faith. Listen, we're saved by grace through faith. And even the faith that it takes to believe this radical gospel is a gift. It's like this birthday gift. I didn't do nothing. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it. This is what the gospel is like, a huge birthday cake with so many slices. You can feed your, your whole neighborhood. You can flee, feed the whole city. This endless supply of, of gospel truth. Woo! Cookie after cookie. Sweet, no calories, nothing, just good stuff. No. Woo! Oh, huh, another one. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. Well, you can read the whole thing, it's just wonderful. Let's read the whole Colossians 3. Verse 3. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll choose. How about one of Catholic Bibles? I'll, I'll read from the Jerusalem Bible. We'll honor that, whoever wrote it. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heavens where Christ is sitting in God's hand. By the way, where are you sitting? spiritually right now? Is anybody aware that you're simultaneously right now sitting in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus? For, you, for the information is on the throne, not in the very back of the, of the throne room. You're on the throne with Christ. That makes you like in the ruling place. Wow. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ. <sighs> hidden. So do you realize what that means? It means that the, the enemy cannot see you. Your spirit. Your spirit. You're, you're invisible. Because the light of Christ is in you. is blinding to darkness. Am I stretching a little too far? I'm giving my Bulgarian logic, but am I pushing a little too far? Maybe theologically? Good. I want to push you. I want to push you out of this. Oh, I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I know we're nothing, nobody. But Jesus, the everybody, the everything, the all and in all is in you. The all and in all is in you. The all and in all is in you. Darkness cannot look at Christ. Therefore, he's blinding. When you come around darkness, demons are blinded. They can't look at you. That's why the Lord says, oh, go ahead and let's set up a table right in front of your enemy. What? Jesus, can we go to the quiet little what, little corner with the little broken palms not in front of my enemies I've been in front of enemies with Kalashnikov machine gun watch looking at you loaded you don't feel like eating no you're like I hope he doesn't push this trigger because I I I have one of those Kalashnikovs for two years and nobody can do 33 rounds but Jesus goes, oh, no, 
Sit down. Right, right in front of the enemy. Whatever he thinks he is. Do you just sit down? Let's, let's fellowship together. Let's eat together. Isn't that a crazy thing? That's what this amazing young lady, Heidi Baker, is, is setting a table for hundreds of thousands of people who have been nothing but damaged and, and hurt and, and, you know, and she sets up the table of the Lord with them, the table of Jesus. Father, we just release more, more power for this amazing Irish ministry, Lord. More power, Lord. To where the enemy realize they cannot be enemy. They have to surrender to those that have a conversation with Jesus. They have to surrender. Lord, we pray for surrendering spirit. The enemy realize they cannot, cannot fight against someone who is sitting with the Lord. Come on. Shara Babra Karasata. Ho! Woo! Oh. Let me see. I, I'll read the King James on this particular, because there's something special in the King James for this Colossians 3. Uh, and it says, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Listen to this, verse, verse 2. Set your affections on the things above. Set your affection on the things above. You know, uh, your life is hidden with, with Christ. So don't worry about those wild enemies that are prancing around right now. They're, they're demonstrating, you know, focus your affection Come on, guys. I, I don't know another translation that says affections, mainly in the mind, which is, which is of course. But can you, just, can you just take a moment and, Father, we just focus our attention, affections on you. We're, we're seated in heavenly places, Lord. Lord, we're not just uh, imagining this. This is real. This is real. And so, Father, I pray you open the eyes of your daughters and your sons to see they are seated. In your arms, practically, you are, you are wrapped around presence, as as around Him, Lord. Lord, I release the affections. Go ahead and release your affections to the Lord. Just go re release your affections to the Lord. Connect affectionately to the Lord. I love I love the 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 uh, the Amplified Bible with the Psalms. In so many places, say I will praise you affectionately. I will praise you affectionately. I will bless you affectionately. I will, I will, uh, you know, guys, when, 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 you, when you're scared of the enemy and scared of this and scared of that, you can't affectionately, uh, you know, you're just like frozen. If it, so, but right now I just release that this is, this is, this is a big secret from heaven. Set your affections to the Lord. Powerful. Set your affection to the Lord. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why don't you just turn to the person next to you and just, just say, Lord, just let them connect affectionately with you. If your husband and his wife is so wonderful, but if your neighbor, just friend, just, 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 just whisper to them. Give them permission. Give them permission to, to just step into the affectionate place with the Lord. It's not emotion. It's beyond that. It's a spiritual affections. It's a spiritual affections. Holy spiritual affections. Powerful. Thank you, Lord. God is arming you. He's arming us. He's, he's giving us ammo. He's giving us weapons. Come on. Release a little more. A little more of this affection with the Lord. Woo! I will praise you affectionately, my God. I will praise you affectionately. Stay in that affection. Stay in that affection. And I'm going to read you a passage from Song of Solomon, chapter 8, uh, verse, let me see, around 6. My particular Bible doesn't have numbers here. I think it's the message translation. So it says, it says this, love is invincible. 
Guys, God is love. And he birthed you as a, as a mom and dad birthed you. God birthed you. The God of invincible love created you. Your spirit is just as invincible. Shara Babara Karasat. Love is invincible, facing danger and death. Passion, passion and laughs. Passion laughs at the terrors of hell. Ha ha ha. Passion laughs at the dangers of hell. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha The fire of love stops at nothing. It, it sweeps everything before it. Flood waters cannot drown love. You're undrownable. No one can drown you. Come on, rise up. Love cannot be bought. Love cannot be sold. Wow. You're, you're, torrents of rain cannot put it out. Come on, somebody. This is good stuff. This is really good stuff. You're kind of quiet, and I understand that. We haven't had meetings in a long time. So you're a little bit out of shape as far as like, yay, whoa, you know. Usually we're a very cr loud crowd, but this was a little, a little uh, maybe it's because Andrew is here and Heidi, and I'm not sure what. I'm just joking, absolutely joking. <laughs> Finally, in Hebrews 12, 28, it says about you're part of unshakable kingdom. You know, I mean, if you ask me, it sounds like a Marvel character kind of situation. Superpower heroes here. Untouchable. Invisible. Incorruptible. Indestructible. Immortal. Come on, supermen and women of God. It's not you. It's Christ who is untouchable. It's Christ who is in you. It's not you. Take your eyes off of you and give him your affection. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. He is unstoppable and corruptible. This is who birthed you as a son and daughters. This is who birthed me and, and erased that communism out of me. Oh, for freedom, Christ has set us free. For freedom, Christ has set us free. I think you should stand up and just give Jesus a big shout. Come on, somebody. Give a big shout for Jesus. Freedom! For freedom, Christ has set us free. Freedom! Freedom! For freedom, Christ has set us free. Okay, I want, I want to have the ministry team of the school come on, come on down. We're just going to give you prophetic words of identity, I believe, tonight. Unless you have a healing word for someone, go ahead and get ready to receive prophetic words, words of knowledge, words of healing. All the students that are here, come on down. Global Celebration School Supernatural. I have one more example of 1 Samuel 17.4. Guys, when I... When I did not, I'm, I just met the Lord, and somebody gave me a Bulgarian Bible, little tiny one, just like, like yours, just a little one. And I begin to read it. And I says, Lord, how do I talk to you? How do I approach you? And the Lord says, just open in the middle. And it's usually the book of Psalms. And just read those Psalms. And, you know, I got pretty, pretty much mentored by David. It's these Psalms with my mentor. Because I, I didn't know how to, how to even approach God. And I know in the army, you couldn't just go to the general uh, and just talk to him. You just have to, you know, a protocol. So I said, God, how do I approach you? And he says, read the Psalms. You, you approach me. Go for it. And so I was trained by this David. And, you know, this young man who I related to, because uh, he's had trouble with his dad, and I, I had the same situation. So he was rejected. I felt for it. And... Uh, but yet God became his daddy. I really know that. I saw it. I saw how God became his father because he was rejected by his father. He says, that's okay. I'll be your dad. So I just loved him. And, and, and when the bears came, when dangers came, they, you know, I just kill them together, like a, almost like a toy, like a, like a game. I just, I just feel that. And, and David was raised with this dad, this huge heavenly father. And, uh, and, and so it came a time for the real 
situation, real war. And, and the enemy was so frightened, frightening that scared the army of God. And I feel like we're in the same kind of moment. There's a lot of fear going on. You know, there's a lot of fear. Uh, and so, but David was from a totally different spirit. He was so affectionate with his daddy that, that, that here's what David said to this Philistines in 1 Samuel 17, 1745. David said to the Philistines, you came against me. You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. I think you need to stand up for this. We're going to give it a shout of that in a moment. Because I want you to get into that diff, in that spirit of boldness to stand while other armies are scared. You, the spirit of David, which is the spirit of Christ. This is not just, not just some shepherd boy. This is the spirit of Christ is inside you. And that spirit is, is inside David saying, But I come to you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will hand you over me. I will strike you down. I will strike you down and cut your head off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout in their victorious spirit. Shout in their victorious spirit. Well, I will cut you down. I will cut your head off in the name of Jesus. This is what Jesus says. This is what God says. Oh, Reach out to the person next to you. Say, Father, just release that bold spirit. We're releasing that pulse for you. Come on, encourage one another. This is the best prophetic word. Encourage one another. Encourage one another. Shara Babra Karasata. If you need an encouraging, if you need someone to speak to your prophetic word, come on down. There are these are seasoned prophets of God. These are seasoned seasoned soldiers of the Lord. They have served with us. They have accurate prophetic word. Just be honest. If you need courage, step up right now. If you need encouraging words, step up right now. The rest of you keep praising. Keep praising. Keep, keep blessing those next to you. Shara babra karashata.